Hello, and welcome to the first time I've ever tried recording a voiceover. <laughs> so uh, this tutorial is a Sharpie dyeing tutorial. I'm specifically Sharpie dyeing a wig. I'm going to post the link below for the exact one. It's from Arta Wigs, um, but I'm Sharpie dyeing it specifically for Bon from The Seven Deadly Sins. So the things you're going to need are a wig, a wig head, Sharpies in the color you're going for, a spray bottle, maybe a paintbrush, and uh, rubbing alcohol. But let's go ahead and get started here. So the wig I'm using is a lace front, and I want to protect the lace. So I'm going in with Got To Be Glued Gel first, but I'm going to turn it inside out on the wig head. And by doing this, it just kind of gives me a way to tuck the hairs away from the hairline. That way I can really get those little wefties in the front protected from the Sharpie. I do want to still be able, obviously, to cover those front wefts with Sharpie dye, but I don't want to have a blue lace, otherwise it won't blend into my scalp. So I'm going in with my Got To Be Glued hair gel, not the spray. The spray is also fine, it'll just take a lot more, but it's the same brand, and I'm just going in with my finger and rubbing it down into the lace, and between these layers, I go in with a hair dryer. It's going to take about three or four layers of this gel in order to protect the lace, but you do want to make sure it's dry in between each coat. One tutorial I watched on how to protect lace suggested blow drying it for 25 minutes, but I'm not quite that patient. So I kind of just blow dried it and then left it for an hour or so to dry on its own and then came back and did the next layer. And maybe that's hasty, maybe it's lazy, I don't even care, because guess what? My lace didn't turn out blue. So definitely protect your lace with got to be glued hairspray or hair gel, blow dry it, and then you can get to work on the Sharpie dyeing itself. But if you're using a lace front, don't regret spending the money and then end up with a multicolored lace. I went over the gel with the spray just because I want to be extra careful. This specifically is a commission and I really don't want to mess up the lace. But now I'm going to take my spritzers, I'm going to take my sharpies, and using pliers you pull apart the sharpie, take out the tube, cut it with an X-Acto knife, you also pull out the tip of the sharpie with the pliers, and you're going to drop that slit tube and the tip down into the bottle itself. I used two sharpies for the first coat. You fill up the bottle about three-fourths if you're using a small bottle. Different tutorials will tell you different things. But you shake it up, test it on a paper towel first. I didn't show that part, but I think you're probably smart enough to figure it out. You're going to go in with your comb, and you're just going to gradually layer in this color by spritzing the wig. And don't expect this to go in really thick really fast. If you want it to go in thicker, you're going to use a paintbrush or a sponge. But I was going for kind of like a cloudy blue rather than a super opaque blue. So I wanted to leave some of the silver showing of the original wig. That way I didn't just have like this super blue wig. Um, the client specifically told me they didn't like blue bond wigs. So that's why I'm going in mostly with the spritzer. And you're just gonna keep continuing that. You're gonna move the hair around, spritz at the roots, comb it out, comb it out. Comb it out. <laughs> yeah, comb it in. Spritz, comb, spritz, comb, spritz. <laughs> and you just keep doing that forever. Or at least until the color is satisfactory. You know, whichever comes first. At this point, I've put the wig back on the wig head and I'm going back in just to make sure that I've got the roots. I tended to miss the roots when I had it laid out and was just combing it through. So really make sure that you're coating it from top to bottom. The roots typically in real hair are going to be darker than the tips. So you really want to make sure that at least at the roots you've got the color really firmly saturated in. And now I'm going to go in with a sponge paintbrush and I'm going to use a bowl and I'm going to paint in at the roots in order to accomplish that slightly darker root look. What I found too is that when I went to do the front of the hairline, the color wasn't holding. And I kept trying and layering and painting and combing and doing all of this stuff. 
and it wouldn't work. But then I realized it wasn't working because of the got to be glued hairspray that I had put in on the lace itself at the beginning. It had actually leaked through onto the roots of the front of the hair. So you can see here where the front of the hair is still completely silver. And that's because the got to be glued is doing its job, but it was driving me crazy and I couldn't figure out why. So what I ended up doing is after I'd painted in the roots all around the rest of the wig, I took the wig into my bathtub and rinsed off the got to be glued and then really carefully went back in with that same sponge brush and painted in the roots again. Once you're satisfied with the color, you hair dry it and put it right back onto the wig head. It doesn't have to be fully blow dried. I just wanted to blow dry it a bit to see what it would look like when it was finally, you know, dry. It does look darker when it's wet. And this is the wig in natural light, fully dry, on a wig head. I liked the color of it. It gave me that cloudy blue I was looking for instead of the heavily saturated true blue or turquoise that I see in a lot of other Bond wigs. I cleared this with my client and then he was ready for styling. So hopefully, oh my goodness, Ollie is barking at intruders. But hopefully this tutorial has helped you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Wait for part two, which is gonna be how to spike a wig. I'd really like to thank my patrons. I appreciate y'all. I love you. Until next time, take care.